Here's the bad juice bait. Well, that's all, just one shot. Yeah, just one shot and he's, I'm afraid he's facing away from the camera, so yeah, that's a shame, whoops. Oh dear, never mind. Yeah, well, there we are, just the one shot for the weekend. Hi, welcome back to another video, good to see you. And um, welcome back to my first camera trap setup of 2023. Um, I'm back, back in my old favourite place. I, if you've seen some of my other videos, you'll have seen uh, a couple of videos back. I was photographing the badgers under the, underneath this fallen tree, under the arch. In that video, I was I was noticing that the badgers were coming down off the bank through this bit of a gap here, and uh, I thought I. First setup of the year, I thought I might as well set it up here, seeing as uh, this is seemed a likely place for you know to get a good photo. The first couple of weeks of January, it was very very quiet. Uh, there was just no activity going on. We had we had quite a, a cold week or two, and uh, it just the badges just weren't just weren't about. One animal that was active at this time was this polecat. I was really excited to see this on the on my trail camera as I've never had one in this area before and hopefully this may make a, a potential camera trap project for the future. In the last couple of weeks I've had my trail cameras uh, on, on this area and there's been a big uh, rise in activity and there's been badgers coming down off this bank and through this gap time after time. So I thought now's a good time to set everything up. And um, during the Christmas and New Year period, I suffered from a little bit of gas. <laughs> not not the type of gas you get from eating too much, uh, although that bit of that did go on. But uh, I mean, gas, gas as in gear acquisition syndrome. I'd been on two minds for quite a while now, whether to have a go with a full frame camera for my uh, camera trap and uh, my local camera shop had uh, this Nikon D610 which has got a full frame 24 megapixel sensor it had it at a good price in my local camera shop and I sat on it for about a week uh, and then I looked in um, about a week later and it been the price had been dropped by another 30 pound and uh, that was it, I crumbled. <laughs> I, went, I went in and I picked it up. So I got it for a really good price. I know I've always said, you might think I'm a bit hypocritical, I've always said in the past is to use, uh, you don't want to be putting expensive gear out, um, you know, leaving it out, you know, for fear, fear of damage or theft. But um, for the price I paid for this, I'm, w I'm willing to take the chance. And the reason I thought, I might get some benefit from a full frame sensor is well this time of year uh, all the leaves are off the trees there's a much better chance now to incorporate a bit of the night sky into your images and um, with that you need to have the, IS, the ISO cranked up a little bit higher so uh, full frame is a better option because uh, you get much as you know you get much cleaner images at high ISOs there are other benefits as well. Um, if normally I use around about 400 ISO um, when I set my camera trap up, but with a full frame camera, because you're getting cleaner images at higher ISOs, you can set the if you set the ISO up to 800 or even 1600, you're still getting clean images at 1600. Um, and what that means, normally I've got my flashes at 400 ISO. I've got my flashes set to about one eighth power at about three meters distant. But if you set up at ISO 800 or ISO 1600, you can turn the, the power down on your flashes from one eighth to down to one sixteenth uh, or one thirty second power. And um, not only does that make, mean that your batteries last a lot longer because you're not putting out so much power, but 
it's less disturbance and more importantly it's less disturbance for the for the animals that he's trying to capture that a little blip a little blip of flash doesn't seem to trouble them as much as as a big blast of, of light sometimes i always have a trail camera set up on my over my camera tap to see the reactions because um if an animal does react badly to the flashes I, I, i'll take my equipment down i i don't like to disturb them too much but um i think with a with a smaller amount of flash power it, it'll cause them a lot less disturbance that's what i'm hoping anyway that's what i'm expecting so i bit the bullet and i, I got myself a uh, a full frame camera now the only thing the downside with that is all my lenses at home apart from my big 500 mil um, f4 which I, I use you know for my bird photography apart from that all my all my lenses are all dx lenses and the only lens that i've really got um for full frame is this 50 mil 1.8 which is a really sharp little lens so uh, that, that's all I'm going with at the moment. Um, if things work out with it, I may, I may, uh, I might try and get a, a, a cheap zoom lens, FX, you know, that that'll uh, go on full frame. So there we go. Um, we've just had this set up now. Last Friday I set it up, and uh, here we are on Monday. It's only had three nights, and uh, as you've seen, I've got one picture of the badger, but it's facing the wrong way. Which uh, a bit disappointed, really, uh, considering the amount of activity I was getting on my trail camera. I was, ex I was honestly expecting two or three photos to have a, have a go at, and uh, but sadly, it, it's just the one. But uh, but there you go. Uh, we'll get everything cleaned up, and uh, we'll leave it out. The weather forecast, give it nice and settled now for a, for a good few days. Uh, which is what I wanted really because the way I've got the camera facing towards this gap um, we're sort of west and southwest is over in that direction and any rain that comes in it'll be driving in straight towards the the front lens of the camera of the camera trap and um, you know, just end up with a lo load of mess all over all, all over the front element of my my camera uh, my camera housing um, which is no good <coughs> but um, seeing as we got a nice dry spell forecast um, we're, we're in a good in a good position to get some decent photos I'll get this all back back in the box get everything checked out make sure it's all firing and uh, we'll leave it out for another good few days so I'll catch you in a few days time see you then well as is so often the case, a few days soon turns into a couple of weeks. And in the last last two weeks, I've managed a couple of decent images, although not quite the shot I had in my mind's eye when I initially set up. But um, as the days go by, I am I'm getting much closer to it. Here's the first of those images, and as is typical of badgers, it's got its nose down to the ground. This is very close to what I had in mind, but I would, I would really like an image with its head up a little bit higher in order to try and get some catch lights in the eyes. A couple of nights later, this rabbit decided to try and get in on the action. Then after a few more quiet nights, just after a rain shower, I got this shot of a rather soggy looking badger, which to date is my best image from this setup. At the time of putting this video up, I, I still have this setup in place, um, and I think it still has a lot of potential of producing a really good image. And if I do get any more, I'll be, I'll be sure to update you in the next video. Thanks for watching. <laughs>